Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, it is my great honour and pleasure today to present to you Dr. Shireen Ebedi for the award of an honorary doctorate in law. <coughs> Shireen Ebedi is a prominent Iranian human rights activist with an international as well as national profile. One of Iran's first female judges, she has struggled tirelessly and to considerable personal cost for the rights of women, children, political prisoners, and those badly served by the justice system in her own country, while insisting on the universality of human rights around the world and decrying the selectivity with which powerful Western countries, including this one, approach the rights of others that they clearly consider the other. She is the first Iranian and the first Muslim woman to have been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. I hadn't quite finished, but that's, that's, that's just... Uh, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> Shireen Ebedi was born in Hamadan in northwestern Iran to a family she described as academics and practicing Muslims, and into a childhood she says was filled with affection and kindness. Her father was a professional legal practitioner and a legal scholar, and she has explained that she chose to study law because of a belief in justice, something that strikes a strong chord with the lawyers at SOAS, as well as with colleagues in other departments. The family moved to Tehran, where she grew up, got her law degree at Tehran University, and swiftly qualified at the Department of Justice, becoming a serving judge in 1969, and in 1975 being appointed president of Bench 24 of the Tehran City Court. During this time, she continued her studies and received her Master of Laws from Tehran University. Relegated to clerical duties in her own court after the Islamic Revolution of 1979, along with all other female judges, by a decision of clerics who held that women should not serve as judges, Iberdi put in for early retirement and eventually, in 1992, got permission to practice as a lawyer instead. In the interim, during what she has described as her period of unemployment, she published a number of books and articles on law and different areas of human rights, including child rights, refugee rights, the history and documentation of human rights in Iran. In her legal practice, she defended high-profile rights-based cases, as well as those of lesser-known petitioners in Iran. She was a co-founder of the Association for the Support of Children's Rights in 1995 and of the Human Rights Defense Center, and also taught at Tehran University including delivering human rights courses attended by students coming from outside Iran as well as home students. In 2003, Shireen Abadi was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for her efforts for democracy and human rights. She has focused especially on the struggle for the rights of women and children, said the committee. For her part, Abadi accepted the prize, quote, for the blessing of this honor for the peace-loving people of my country. She spoke of the universality of human rights in the harsh light inter alia of poverty and of Guantanamo Bay, of the selectivity of approaches at the United Nations Security Council towards the occupied Palestinian territories in Israel and towards the state and people of Iraq. She spoke of the Iranian people's struggles over the last 100 years, which would of course include the overthrow of the reforming Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh in 1953 with CIA involvement and, lest we forget, British instigation and support. She spoke of Iranian history and literature, of Islam, of democracy, and of the position of women in Muslim states. On this, she has frequently insisted, I am against patriarchy, not Islam. In an oft-quoted oft passage from her memoir, she states, it is not religion that binds women, but the selective dictates of those who wish them cloistered. That belief, along with the conviction that change in Iran must come peacefully and from within, has underpinned my work, she says. Eberdi's activities did not go unnoticed, arrested several times by the authorities, and with harassment against members of her family and colleagues increasing, she was forced into exile in 2009. We share with her the hope that her exile will be temporary and that she will be able in the future to return in safety to her homeland to continue there the long struggle for rights that she fights at the moment from outside. We have something of a connection already with Dr. Abedi. Last year, she presented the Globalization Lecture for the SOAS Department of Development Studies under the title, The Role of Women in Promoting Peace in the Middle East. 
and her second daughter, Nargis, is a PhD candidate in the SOAS School of Law. We at SOAS hope that our relationship with this extraordinary woman will grow in the coming years. Along with many other awards just last year, on the occasion of the 100th International Women's Day, The Guardian included Shireen Iberdi in their top 100 most inspirational women. I am sure we can all understand why. Chairman, it is my privilege now to present Dr. Shireen Iberdi for the award of Honorary Doctor of Law, LLD, and to invite her to address this assembly. Ali Cenaban, Dr. Tim Miller, Eva Professor Vibli, Asati de Gerami, Fargo Tassilan Aziz, Hanum Haba Agayan, Sepas Kozaram, Kiba Ehtoye, Dr. Oyev Tehari, Marob Ozviate, Hanaba de Farhangi Hot Pazirofti. Uh, the <coughs> Honourable Chair of SOAS, Dr. Tom Miller, doc and Professor um, uh, Webley, the Director of SOAS, I'm in, and ladies, gentlemen, Honourable Professors, Asati. and <coughs> the Honourable Professors, and ladies and gentlemen, I am truly honoured that you have ex you have accepted me into the your cultural family at SOAS by honouring me with this. PhD. به دانشجویانی که فارغ و تحصیل شدن تبریک میگم و امیدوارم در زندگی جدیدی که در پیش رو دارید مانند گذشته موفق باشید. I would like to extend my congratulations to the new graduates and I hope that you will be very successful in your new life as you have been as a student. تعدادی از هموطنان من از جمله دخترم در دانشگاه شما تحصیل می کنند از اینکه پذیرای آنان شده و علم خود را سخاوتمندانه در اختیار دانشجویان ایرانی قرار داده اید سپاسگزارم a number of my compatriots including my daughter they are students at your university and i am indeed very grateful to you for sharing your knowledge with my compatriots Thank you. Hamchenin be tedadi az behtarin asatid Irani dar in danishka tadris mikonand. Also, some of our excellent um, professors from Iran are lecturers at this university. Asatid va danishjoyan Irani dar haqiqat sofaray farhangi Iran hastand dar keshvar Britaniya. Iranian professors and Iranian students are in effect the cultural ambassadors of Iran in the United Kingdom. Mutasafane dar sal gozashte tedadi danish junama ke az suye barkhi az nahatay hukumat Iran hedayat va hemayat mishodand be sefarat Britaniya dar Tehran hamle kardand. Sadly, uh, last year a number of pseudo students under the guidance and supported by the government of the Islamic Republic of Iran attacked the embassy of the United Kingdom in Iran. چند ساعت اونجا رو اشغال کردند پرچم سفارت و مقداری از اساسی اونجا رو تخریب کردند و متعاقب آن روابط سیاسی بین دو دولت به حال تحریق درآمد. They occupied that embassy for a few hours. They took down the banner and the flag of the UK, and they sabotaged some of the furnishings and the equipments in the embassy. And subsequently, the diplomatic relations between the United Kingdom and Iran was severed. 
مردم ایران با این عمل موافق نبودند. The Iranian people were against such conduct. و من ضمن اظهار تأسف از چنین عملی که مغایر با ضوابط حقوق بین الملل و تعهدات دولت ایران است امیدوارم تعلیق روابط سیاسی تأثیری در روابط فرهنگی بین دو کشور نگذارد. I would like to express my regret that this action took place, which was an action that was contrary to human rights criteria and all the um, obligations of the Islamic Republic of Iran. And I very much hope that this suspension of diplomatic relations between the two countries does not lead to suspension of cultural relations between the two nations. همکاران ارجمند صلح از حقوق بنیادین بشر است و بدون آن سایر حقوق از جمله حق تحصیل معنا و مفهوم خودش را از دست میده my dear colleagues peace is one of the fundamental human rights without which many other rights such as the right to education become uh, meaningless و صلحی پایدار است که بر دو پایه دموکراسی و عدالت اجتماعی استوار باشد. و با فقدان این دو اگر کشوری آرام باشد مسلما آرامش او ظاهری است و با کوچکترین حادثه ممکن است تبدیل به کوه آتش فشان شود چنان که دیدیم در کشورهایی مثل سوریه و لیبی اتفاق افتاد as we have seen it happening in countries such as Syria and Libya. Iran is one My country, Iran, is one such country. At the moment, it appears to be peaceful, yet, as I mentioned, it is like a volcano that could erupt at any moment. علت نارضایتی مردم نقص گسترده و سیستماتیک حقوق بشر در داخل کشوره. And the reason for people's unhappiness in the country is a widespread and systematic violation of human rights in the country. در حال حاضر بیش از 100 دانشجو در زندان در زندان داریم و همچنین تعداد پانزده نفر از اسادیت ما در زندان هستند فقط به خاطر اینکه دموکراسی میخواهند. At present, we have some hundred students who are imprisoned. We have some fifteen of our professors who are also behind bars. Why? Because they merely wanted democracy. متاسفانه بیشترین تعداد جورنالیست و وبنگارها رو در زندان ایران داره. And I'm sad to say that Iran has the highest number of imprisoned journalists in the world. Hamchenin siyasat hai na durust kharji ba es shode ke tahrim hai iktisadi bar mardom Iran tahmil beshand. Moreover, the wrong foreign policy of the government of Iran. has led to the imposition of economic sanctions on Iran. And one of the issues that the Iranian people opposed to and are against is the Iranian government's support for the dictatorship of Bashar Assad in Syria. 
and for dispatching arms and military forces to Syria to suppress the oppressed people of that country. صرفاً به خاطر فقدان دموکراسی در ایران اتفاق میفته زیرا ایران کشوری است غیر دموکراتیک and what i've mentioned is happening just because there is no democracy in iran iran is an undemocratic country و همچنین فساد اداری که به صورت گسترده در ایران اتفاق میفته باعث و برنامه های غلط اقتصادی باعث شده اختلاف طبقاتی در ایران زیاد بشه. Another issue is the widespread administrative corruption that is now rife in the country and also the wrong economic policies that have led to the widening of the wealth gap. و در حقیقت عدالت اجتماعی هم وجود ندارد. And in fact, there is no social justice either. با وجود مشکلاتی که در ایران وجود داره، مردم ایران با حمله نظامی و یا تحریم اقتصادی که مردم را سخت می‌بزنه مخالفند. But despite all the problems that exist in Iran, the Iranian people. They're against a military attack on the country. They also oppose the kind of economic sanctions that would harm the people. Iran potential has a good potential for creating jobs. One of them is the Iran has great potential for reconstruction and development, and one of it is its young workforce. حدود 70 درصد جمعیت ایران زیر 30 ساله. Some 70% of the Iranian population are under the age of 30. و من مطمئن هستم که نسل جوان می تواند ایران را به آزادی و آبادی برساند. And I'm confident that our young generation will be able to lead Iran to freedom and to progress. و همونطوری که در ابتدای صحبت هم گفتم تعدادی از جوانان ما در دانشگاه های کشور شما از جمله در در سوال تحصیل میکنند. And as I mentioned earlier in my speech, many of our young people are studying in your universities, including SOAS. جوانانی که شما تربیت میکنید برای سازندگی ایران فردا موثر و مفید خواهند بود. These young people that you are educating would be very influential in development of future Iran. متشکرم از اینکه جوانان ما را برای ساختن ایران کمک می‌کنید. I would like to thank you for helping our youth to make and develop a new Iran.